All right, so um, yeah, so the two community updates for today is that last week there was these uh, uh, really cool progress updates from the working groups. The recording is available. Uh, it's it's linked in this document, and um, after the meeting, we'll also link it to today's um, page on the hub. Um, I'll put it in chat for anybody that uh, wants to get the link. Uh, now, yeah, so um, the um, the other thing, and this is open to, for some discussion, of course, is that you know up to about uh, six months ago or so, we had these monthly paper cuts as a way to address uh, kind of small issues, um, user facing issues primarily, and all. And then at Montpellier meeting in May. Um, a decision was basically reached to cut the paper cuts and revisit this idea later in maybe a slightly different format. And so the idea that's floated to the top uh, currently is to have like a two, maybe three times a year, like a two day event, uh, a virtual event, where it's basically everybody focuses on a, a handful of issues and works on those collaboratively. So the kind of idea for how to organize this is to take the next month and a half or so and nominate potential issue issues in a um, Google Doc. It's currently blank, so awaiting contributions and lists. Um, and then in the last few days before the event, uh, they would kind of be curated um, to identify the ones to uh, to focus on. So the 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 give this some legs. The idea was try to hold this on December 12th and the 13th. It's a Monday and Tuesday. Uh, everybody focuses on this uh, event for those two days and, and we kind of have it as a, an internal hackathon. So it's unlike the paper cuts that were meant to be a community building exercise more so. This is really like a team-wide hackathon. Um, and, you know, we see what the sort of takeaways are. So any, any comments to begin with? I would be curious how, how we're going to curate that. Uh, largely based on the sort of two year roadmap uh, as to sort of things that are, you know, like last week, there was a, a lot of dependency on the backend working group from the presentation meeting and so to kind of make sure some of those uh, critical pieces are focused on so it would mostly the the PIs would I think take a look at that at the end um, maybe the working group leads or in combination coordination with the working group leads and um, come up with with a list of you know, ordered list. Well, if there are no other uh, comments or questions, I guess we'll uh, pencil this in as December 12th and 13th and uh, give it a shot, see where uh, how we come out the other end. Um, any other updates from anybody else uh, who wants to capture the, the audience? Not. Um, then in Europe, um, we can uh, start sharing and is that sharing correctly? Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> I forgot to unmute myself before I hit share and then I couldn't find the button. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, at GCC uh, this past year, we had a, a, a 
uh, birds of a feather meeting about the release process and kind of changes we could make to it and enhancements uh, we could make and and just kind of general discussion about how we think it's going mm -hmm. and can improve it. Um, and a lot of people participated. And that's where kind of most of this came from. Um, uh, so and it, it, my name is on the uh, the other part, but I made uh, John's going to contribute here too. Uh, talk about the testing. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that like, to acknowledge that. Um, so starting off, um, a general overview of the release is right here in this checklist, right? So we uh, kind of have the the scaffolding of release of, of this this issue on the right that contains uh, everything that has to happen to get the release done. Um, this is the new one we just created for twenty three point one, um, and you know it's public. It's a public document that everyone can look at and. Um, you know, see where we are in the process of the release. So hopefully this is completely open and people can follow, um, or rather the goal is that it's open, people can follow the release progress and see what's going on pretty easily. Um, so, okay, so basically we we have some prep where we set up these issues and things like that. And then the first thing that really kicks off the release is this pre-freeze meeting. Um, so in that we, well, <laughs> hang on. Yeah, okay, I'll get to that. Uh, then we we officially branch the release. That's what's uh, that's the freeze, so to speak. Um, we deploy it to uh, the various Galaxy servers that that the sort of core group controls, um, and then uh, we test it. <laughs> Along the way, we fix uh, new and outstanding bugs. Uh, we create the release notes. Then finally, we create the release and announce it. Um, this issue is live right now. Um, so, you know, two of 60 tasks have been done. So there's a lot left to do for the 23.1 release, um, but it's all here. So, uh, there we go. Um, okay, so before we even freeze, um, I called it week negative one because week zero being the freeze mm -hmm. kind of made sense for everything else. Um, we have a, a, a meeting that's kind of historically been committers, but really it's open to anyone who wants to attend, um, <laughs> especially if you have you know, something that you're working on that you care to get into the release. This is the point where we, we look through, um, here's a screenshot here, but we look through basically um, all open PRs that are milestone for 23, for the, for the, for the upcoming release. Um, so right now we have 72 open PRs. These either all need to be uh, bug fixes or merged or reassigned to 23.2 before uh, we before we branch. Um, so the idea behind the freeze is that it's a feature freeze. No new features uh, go into that branch at that point. So you have a sufficient amount of time to test what's in the branch and get it to people, um, you know, in a well-tested form without sort of rushing in new features at, at the last minute. Um, so yeah, everyone's encouraged to attend. Basically, we just pull up this list and walk through every single issue and go, is this critical to the release? Are we going to get it in? Who's going to do it? Move forward. Um, so for the actual freeze, uh, assume we've gone through that list. All blocking milestone PRs uh, have been either merged, delayed, or closed. They're rarely closed. We just kind of bump them uh, at this point. Um, what what the, the freeze actually entails is you know, making sure all the branches are merged forward and then creating a new release branch. It'll be release underscore 23.1 for the next one. Um, and then you push that up. And at that point, that's a stable branch and only bug fixes go to it. Dev continues on as normal, but you know, sort of the hope and the whole point of the freeze <laughs> is that with no new features going into the forthcoming release, developers are free to focus on bug fixes and things like that for the next you know, N weeks. Um, so after the freeze, we immediately update test instances, both the uh, test.galaxyproject.org and the toolshed. Um, ideally, these are kind of updated along the way, uh, and, and there's not a, a whole lot of gap. We'll kind of circle back to this later. Um, we uh, issue re review timeline notes. So basically, what this bullet item bullet point means mm -hmm. is if there are any uh, so the release managers at this point should look at any security issues if there are any. We don't always have them, which is, I guess, a good thing. Um, and make sure that someone owns those issues and that they're getting prioritized for, for testing um, early in the cycle. And, you know, just making sure every single bug uh, 
issue that is milestoned for the release still has an owner. So someone's responsible for fixing it. Otherwise, you know, we go a couple of weeks and the bug's still there because nobody looked at it, right? Um, and uh, we make sure that the release testing team has been selected. Um, so yeah, at this point, everything that's milestone to 23.1 is uh, an outstanding PR that's a bug fix or an issue that's a bug and all of these things have owners. Um, okay, so after the freeze, we um, this timeline's still a little bit flexible. We're kind of talking about how to best do it. Um, we talked about it at the technical uh, board meeting or whatever that was called um, last time. Um, but basically, within about a week, we want to deploy uh, the release to usegalaxy.org and toolshed uh, and, and the main toolshed as well. And then the release testing team uh, starts within that first week. Um, and John, you want to take over? Yep. All right. Uh, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, my, my headphones are acting up. So uh, the team is selected based, uh, we've been doing it for roughly three years. Uh, we have a rotation, rotating schedule in place and the team is selected semi-randomly based on this schedule. So the team is usually six to five uh, members from several labs. We try to um, have a selection from the main Galaxy Labs uh, and ideally, uh, in the ideal case, it's a mix of developers, admins, and users. Uh, usually, we get mostly developers, so we would like to change that in the future. Um, select members of previous teams, uh, of the, the previous teams, by design, are supposed to be, at least several of them are supposed to be present at meetings to ensure knowledge transfer, so they're present in advisory capacity. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but at least we try to ensure that knowledge is not lost from uh, release uh, period to release period. Uh, it usually takes uh, a week. We try to stick within a week. Uh, in terms of time, it's three to four full days, depending on the, re uh, depending on the release size. Uh, we have two team meetings, one before the testing period and one on completion, and the results are typically presented at the following Galaxy community call. Sometimes we miss it, uh, and in that case, we provide a, a, a formal report. Uh, next slide, please. So the overall goals are really, we have two goals. One goal is to uncover any bugs, problem issues that have not been discovered by Galaxy's automated tests. Uh, and the second goal is to open issues, open corresponding issues on GitHub and communicate with appropriate working groups to ensure that all the critical items that have been discovered uh, receive proper attention and are fixed uh, or somehow addressed before the formal release is completed. Uh, the testing plan has been evolving over the past three years. So this is what it roughly includes. And these items may be uh, modified uh, for the next release. So we use uh, GTN tutorials for scenario-based testing. So these releases include uh, well-tested and tried paths which a typical user will follow during a typical um, use case uh, session. So we use that as uh, guidelines to follow to try to discover issues. Uh, second is we use a list of primary updates. This is what's highlighted in the release notes. These are the major features of the release and these we give uh, special attention. We try to test them thoroughly to make sure that they really uh, work as expected. Uh, we also have a list of PRs. This is the list of PRs included in the release notes. Uh, these are more for loosely defined requirements based testing because this list is usually very long and um, we try to ensure wherever possible, again, that what's in the PR actually uh, happens and uh, has not been broken uh, by, by subsequent PRs uh, commits. Uh, the process and collaboration is straightforward. We self, we have a long list of items in shared uh, one or more Google Sheets. We self-assign those. Uh, we shared uh, one or more Google Docs for collaboration. That would be usually item-specific discussions, uh, various notes. And of course, we have a release testing channel on Matrix for general discussion. Uh, next slide, please. So how we test, uh, we use the 
Uh, we use the deployed release, usually on galaxy.org. Uh, for GTN tutorials, we try to note any issues which have been, uh, which are a result of the changes which were made in the upcoming release and the release being tested. And we know those and open appropriate uh, issues on, on the GTN re repo. Uh, most importantly, we try to stay away from the happy path or from the path which is expected um, from a user who would be following the, re uh, the tutorial precisely. So we try to experiment and, and uh, um, stray away from that expected scenarios to find some hidden issues. The release notes, uh, again, this, rep this represents the list of new things that should work. Uh, so we uh, uh, use PRs which come with which come with instructions on how to test them manually. This is done by, uh, we, we've been using a new PR template, which includes a text a checkbox, which is if checked, uh, the PR, the description of the PR will provide specific steps, steps which the release team would be expected to uh, follow to test the feature. Another candidate for manual release testing is PRs, which contain a well-defined uh, UI change or some fix. So we try to verify the item, we ensure it is present, we ensure that functions are just as described. And again, we stray away from the happy path. We try to come up with uh, use, uh, edge cases, uh, what, what a user might do accidentally or, or by mistake. So uh, when the system does not perform as expected, we Again, in the ideal case, when it's possible, we try to verify that the problem did not occur in the previous release. Uh, and in any case, if it's a problem, we uh, open an issue on GitHub and tag it appropriately. So I suppose that is that is the process as of now. Dana, on to you. Can I have a question on the yes on the slide? Um, so the GTN tutorials. How does the testing of these? look like is it just like you open the tutorial in one window and you like follow it manually on main or yes. is there some sort of automation in place like selenium attached we to it or we discuss automation uh probably every uh release cycle and it needs to be implemented for now it's manual and it needs to be addressed uh, an important bit there, though, is the so automation is going to follow the happy path, right? So a big part of this is actually walking through the tutorial and going, ah, oh, that wasn't where I expected it. Obviously, the automation is going to know where to find the right button. But if the user can't on the fly, that's the kind of thing that we're hoping to cut. I mean, you have to have a person in the loop actually trying some of this stuff, at least. It should be in conjunction with automated testing. But I think the hands-on testing is is has been super beneficial so far. I mean, I agree. It also depends, but maybe, you know, if we get a developer working on this, um, maybe they could actually do the automated testing if there's not yet one. Yeah. That's the hope and the intention. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um, so then the next week, uh, release testing has completed. Um, and basically we need to, so... Most of the bugs that come out of this sort of thing are uh, destined for the UI, UX, and backend groups. Um, that's just, that's where they go up. Fortunately, both of those groups have weekly meetings at this point. So in each of those weekly meetings, um, for the next, I think, two weeks, I have it, yeah. Um, each of those meetings should be focused pretty much exclusively on fixing, on, on the state of the bugs for the release, um, making sure they're assigned, making sure the people that are working on them have the, you know, tools they need to get them resolved and that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, so developers focus on known and incoming bugs. Uh, and at this point, we're going to shelve, you know, non-release work at, to the extent that we have to, right? Uh, because there's no point. It's not whatever you're working on now as a new feature isn't going to come out for four months. So, um, and, and at this point, uh, Goats will begin working on release notes. Um, I'll follow up on this again later. Uh, in terms of the working group ownership stuff. Um, so about a week uh, allotted for that. Um, week three, that should all be wrapping up. Um, bug fixes, uh, finalized bug fixes for both backend and UI UX groups. Um, again, we'll focus on the weekly meetings and use those as sort of the clearinghouse for making sure 
all the assigned issues are resolved. Um, I think this is pretty successful uh, in, in the run-up to GCC. Um, and then, then we kind of drag that out, but that's uh, something else. Um, and then we, the release notes should be finalized in week three. Um, so we have two sets of release notes, right? The user-facing release notes that are uh, totally curated, um, nice, you know, this is what you actually want to see in your email with the highlights and the, the really important stuff. And then we have these automated gener automated uh, release notes that get uh, generated that we just have to continue to to regenerate as, uh, you know, bug fixes and PRs come in. Um, and then week four, we ship it. Um, so when all the blocking issues are resolved, the PRs are resolved, and the release notes are fully updated, um, we're, we're ready to go. Um, so I didn't want to dig too far into this, but basically, uh, this is all automated. We could say make, release, create. You make a couple of PRs, and then the release is official. Um, that's, that's not new, to be clear. That's you know, older stuff. We've, we, we have to update it um, a little bit, but uh, the release process is has a lot of automation to it that's really nice that that's all linked off of that um, the issue that I talked about earlier. Um, and then we announce it. So uh, we make sure that the release is listed on docs.galaxyproject.org. Um, getgalaxy.org has to link to the right new release. Um, we make a, a hub highlight post that's a news item so that everyone can see it. And then we tweet it, tweet it post it, and email it to everyone we know. Um, Okay, so that's the overview of the release process. That's that's how how it works. Um, now I kind of have a, a sort of a mixed bag of topics we've talked about, changes we've made, stuff like that. Um, so for uh, 2209, there is no 2209. Um, 2205 was huge uh, and amazing. Um, and it came out so close to when we would freeze for 2209, we decided not to do it. Um, just because of the overhead for both developers and deployers, and the 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 narrow gap between what would actually be in 2209 and 2205, you know, it's not worth doing. Um, but it gave us a good point for breaking off and saying, okay, based on our conversations at GCC, we're going to overhaul our, our our naming schema. Um, this came out, you know, every time we had a release that was behind a month or two, which was not uncommon, as folks know. Um, people would be like, why is the January release coming out in March? Why is the, you know, um, so part of what we decided to do was just break away from the month naming scheme. We're just going to use numbers. We still want three releases um, because that's a, it feels like about the right amount of content to ship to deployers and whoever. Um, and well, those will be sort of an early we have to have a release right before GCC, right? Because everyone's working on features and things like that. You want to get out before GCC. So that point is kind of fixed. The sort of May, early June or whatever, depending on when GCC is, we've got to have a, a release about six weeks or so before GCC. Um, so based on that, we, we'll probably have, we'll probably still have like a January release, a May release and a, you know, October, September, whatever release. Um, but now we're not fixed to those particular dates. And we can we can orient those around features. We can have a stability release if we want um, without having to predict, you know, if it's going to be four months, six months, whatever between. Um, yeah, and we can shift them based on events. If there's an event we want to get stuff out for or whatever. Um, so that gives us a little bit of flexibility. Um, I was really hoping to have this done for, um, for this call, but... I had two kids and a wife with the flu, and I think I've got it now. So that's that's been my week, and it's not done yet. But basically, um, it, the way we generate that big release scap, the release issue is it's all you know plain text that gets posted to a GitHub issue. Um, Mermaid has these charts, uh, and it's got a Gantt chart plugin. Um, you can automatically generate Gantt charts with just this text you see. Whoop, of course, I can't click it with the text you see on the left. Um, and it generates this cool chart where you see visually, you know, wh what, what blocks of time belong to what things and, you know, how it all flows into the release, what tasks are dependent on other tasks and that sort of stuff. Um, and we can automatically generate all of this. Um, I was experimenting with it and it works. You can embed it straight in GitHub. So um, for the 23.1 release, we'll have you know, this chart at the very top of the issue saying, you know, kind of like, this is the scaffold for, for, uh, you know, this, this is the, this is a visual picture of the release. 
Um, so I, I hope to have this finished by next week, but um, we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, it embeds right on GitHub and it, it looks really cool. Um, so release management, we decided um, at the at the BOF that we want two committers assigned per release with the, the plan to occasionally rotate. Um, Marius has been doing basically a, an amazing heroic job for the past several releases. Um, and that's uh, an untenable situation. <laughs> um, we need to free up some of his time. So we're, we're gonna try to rotate uh, this time around. Um, myself and, and John will sort of uh, wrangle things. Um, but what we kind of, you know, this came out of the um, testing team doing such a great job. If we can find large components of the release, like the testing to delegate to particular working groups, I think relying on the existing working group infrastructure will help us a lot. Um, so you have a couple of point people just basically attending all the meetings and making sure the dots are connected. Um, for this next one, maybe two, I don't know, we'll see in January how this one went. Um, we'll have uh, John and myself um, um, doing that role. Um, but then, you know, so the release testing, all the release testing will be done by the testing hardening working group. So they will own that whole part of the process. Um, all the release notes and announcement, um, you know, all the tweeting, all that sort of stuff will be completely owned by the GOATS group. So the, the, whoever's doing the release management will attend those meetings and talk to them and make sure that, you know, they're on top of it basically. Um, but hopefully the release manager doesn't have to manually the hope is that the release manager doesn't have to actually do all of the release note editing. And this, that's, I'm not saying that that's what's been happening. The Ghost group has been super helpful, but um, just to sort of formalize that they're the owners of that part of the process. The testing is owned by the testing and hardening working group, that sort of thing. Um, and then the other component, right? Uh, all of the bug fixing, again, sort of, Mary, you've done heroic efforts fixing all the bugs yourself in the past. Hopefully we can just push those to the working groups and have them, you know, distributed with our weekly meetings and that kind of thing. Um, that's the plan. Um, we'll see how it goes. So another big thing we discussed was um, using the use galaxy branch to basically have a rolling release on main. So instead of waiting right up until release time to update to 23.1 or whatever it is, we actually main would more closely track, you know, whatever stable thing we have we think is in dev. Um, it's obviously gonna take more administrative effort, um, but it'll prevent things like, uh, you know, we push the new history domain and realize everything's falling over because of performance issues or something like that, right? Um, so we don't have a formal plan in place for this, um, but we talked about it at the, you know, uh, the BOF and everyone seemed to think it was a good idea. Um, so th this is something we're looking to do. Um, sooner rather than later. This comes at the, the cost though, right? Yeah, yeah, more more administrative effort. We mm -hmm. may deploy bugs. Uh, there's a support burden as well, potentially. Um, so if we deploy some new feature that's not you know, well discussed or whatever, people might be like, well, hey, what is this thing? I don't know what's going on. Um, I was also thinking that it would, like it will paint us in like less stable light, right? Like use Galaxy will be more sort of bug prone and less reliable because we're using it as a more of a test bed at this point. I I don't imagine it's gonna it wouldn't run dev. I'm in, I, at least what we talked about was sort of dev minus a couple of weeks at least. Um, so stuff that that's been run, um, you know, on test uh, Galaxy Project Org, etc. Um, but and the main point is we don't want to deploy four months of changes all at once to main. Um, that was the hope. I mean, we, this is, it's what we talked about. We can always change it. Um, but. How about uh, creating the release branch early um, and using the release branch as what runs on main and picking things that are deemed you know, porting things from dev to the release branch as opposed to the sort of week minus one at week one of post-release. Um, cherry picking particular PRs across, or, I mean, I, I think in any, if you try to, 
you can do that with smaller stuff. Um, but I think at any scale, merging at, at significant scale, you're going to want to just merge the whole branch, right? It's it's going to be a nightmare to try to pick, you know, a handful of, of branches or PRs that you want to deploy and a handful that you don't. So um, another possibility might be to have an additional, I don't know, source um, from which, you know, we can have a sort of unstable main. Uh, so we would have another DNS, another entry point that normal users maybe wouldn't know about, but then at least we're running against mains config. The downside being that we don't really know how it will hold up with traffic. You could do that. You couldn't do it with database differences, though. Um, so anytime that's there was, true. yeah. I mean, I, I that, that's are we at this true, point like it? building another test instance? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, test. I mean, or we make tests more useful. Uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> can we do? You know, th there's probably a lot of automation that would catch some things like performance issues and stuff, right? So does it make yeah. sense? I don't, I don't think, think so. We can, <laughs> There, well, there is there is a plan. So Simon had a cool poster about how they use Selenium for testing performance exactly, uh, right, at, right. at GCC. There is a plan in the testing and hardening group to try to do something like that. Um, so yes, but uh, you know, as a part of the release too. I, I mean, do we? I guess the question is, do we think it's going to be super unstable to try to do this? Uh, when we talked at GCC, it seemed like we were mostly on board based on my notes, but. Um, so could we, for example, make a copy of main's database, right, and run that someplace, um, but have any new files created in a different place, right? By no. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's, difficult. It's enormous. It's enormous. I okay. mean, yeah. it'll take, yeah, a day probably to make a full And it changes and every split it. second. <laughs> Right. But I mean, you could do even... from a point in time, and actually, we have nightly backups, right? So the easiest thing would be to to restore from there. But it's it's very large. Um, yeah, yeah. Just because I know test doesn't get very much use, right? right? Right. And certainly from people having large histories and things like that, that's not too often happening there, right? And so it's we we need to test like a a real production instance with these things. Yeah. How are we on storage on test uh, compared to main? Can we incentivize people to use test more by giving them larger quota? We could potentially do that. Yeah, we. So right now it's it's almost unusable, right? I think it's ten gigs, um, and we could certainly up that. Although the the amount that they have on main is already not very useful. I mean, if you're just a regular user of Galaxy, right? What incentive, unless it had more quota and more resources than main? What what incentive would you have for using the less stable service? Yeah, why would you ever... unless it unless it just happens to have some feature that's not released yet that you desperately want, but that's going to be rare. I mean, I want to point out that for the most part, when we do database migrations, uh, it I mean, the current code needs the migration, but most of the time, I mean, it, it's quite rare that these are incompatible. Uh, sort of, we can upgrade and old code can run it, but not the other way around. Yeah. Um, so, I, I mean, I think having another entry point with the same database and same object store, just running a different version on the web handler would probably be fine. Of course, it doesn't have the same traffic. So, you know, I'm mostly thinking about the new history problems we've had. Um, and, you know, I mean, we should, I mean, it's, it's also easier when we deploy less changes at once. This, I think, yeah. was. That's where this came from. Question yeah. mark. Um, so I think we need to, we need, we need to have the ability to roll out changes for a brief moment to see how it holds up with traffic. It and the main benefit is a test instance, right? You, you keep a test instance and production separate, right? I, I just I get scared sharing data. I mean, that's the old model, right? But I think a lot of places just uh, roll out a few changes 
check how it holds up and then take them offline again. Do we do this on a Friday afternoon? <laughs> no. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, the process needs to be is, there, right? It, my main concern is upgrading and downgrading the database and migrations that we add uh, during the dev cycle and then remove because we decide not to, to deploy those. Um, so if you do, even if you do upgrade the database and then run the old code and the new code simultaneously, right? Uh, uh, you have to guarantee that the, the upgrade works with the old code before you do it. And uh, then there has to be a way back from that. I think there's like a, there's still a lot of problems here too of like tool state or the way the job directory is laid out. We have so many like to do remove this code at some point um, or, oh crap, we did this wrong, but it was in Galaxy for a year sort of things in the code base. And the more times we are deploying less tested code to main, the more I think that sort of thing will crop up. Okay, but then uh, we need to invest. I mean, I agree and ideally we'd have a good load testing suite, but this is really complex uh, to get something that would actually catch real bugs. Yeah. Um, and then we need to put some engineering effort into this. I think that's the alternative. I mean, I think it's worth the investment of time. You know, I, I, I have no idea how complex this is, but it sounds crazy complicated. And, um, but I think that's okay. You know, if we're doing three deployments a year and, you know, like so much of the, you know, I would say uh, trust is built into, you know, our, our user base already that, it's just too like really high risk, um, I think. I think, but um, you know, maybe I didn't understand this presentation correctly. But usually, you know, of course, there would be like a staging environment. Um, all the testing would be done on that. It would mimic the an anonymized version of the production database somehow. Again, not an easy, not a small lift at all. You know, I mean, it could take a year to plan for something like this. But it might be, it might be worth it. So. We have tests. Um, the problem is that it doesn't see a lot of users, right? Tests we can update at will. Uh, there used to be, maybe still is, a big sign on the front that says the test is for breaking, right? You can update it anytime you want with the newest code. Um, the problem is that nobody really uses it. We even run PR branches and stuff on it. Like, it, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so but we yeah, have nobody uses it. And we the have ways is very small, so yeah, it doesn't it doesn't crop up these issues with you know gigantic joins and seek searches and stuff like that that work fine on a small database, but mm. not on a big one. But I we, guess you so. know, yeah, that, that that's making the case for having an instance that runs a copy of main database, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, that's kind and of- Sometimes that's called a QA node, like sits between test and main, test and prod. So you have a node yeah. but more similar to main, but you know, it's another, stop point for the code. Yeah, you, know, you would still need to have users actually testing it though, it is, it's part of the issue here as well, but. Yeah, I mean, I guess that, that's kind of two pronged in the sense that we need to have reasonable load testing, but um, in order to understand how we can, what critical paths we need to hit in order to know that there are no regressions you need very intimate knowledge of what the moving parts are and what was well, changed yeah <laughs> instead of a rolling release you know minus two weeks kind of window thing what if we had sort of a mid-release sit down of all the you know sort of technical leads or whoever folks invested and just deploy at that point if we think it's good you know just Basically, we want to we want to reduce the delta, any kind of QA node or whatever. I mean, that sounds like a ton of engineering effort that we don't have time for, right? I mean, I think realistically, I guess that depends, right? So the more often you do it, the more stable the process becomes. And if you say we're also going to do a twenty three point two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve. Um, you can say, yo, deployers shouldn't deploy this. Uh, but we, we are going to do this and we run through the major things. So 
I don't think our users have a problem if a job fails. I don't think our users care as long as we don't lose their data. Yeah. Um, and you know, you have a reasonable uptime. Um, and so if we run through the tool tests and the <laughs> workflow tests, we know nothing major is broken. You know, some user interface things can can break, but yeah, I mean, I, I think that's the alternative. I mean, I, I think it seems safer in the long run, right? You, you, we were saying, you know, um, we don't want to deploy untested code to main, but that's that's effectively what we do at the freeze, and we do a, a whole lot of untested code at once, right? The only difference is maybe we're doing two weeks at a time or three weeks at a time, whatever. Um, and I think my hunch is that we could actually do a better job managing expectations instead of having just two horrible weeks once we deploy to main by doing something yeah. you know, more like what we talked about. That, that could I be feel like we used to deploy production level things every two weeks. And I feel like every time we've lengthened the amount of time that we go between releases, I mean, I, maybe people don't, I mean, most people I mean, are. We still do, that. right? Uh, it's just that they come from uh, the tested release branch. Different. So, yeah. I mean, it was, it was when dev was master or main, right? Like it, it was, it was bad times in galaxy. I think the stability was terrible. I mean, we didn't have the test suite that we have now. So presumably it wouldn't be as bad, but I feel like, I mean, to push back here, like, I feel like every time we increase the length of time between a release, we actually end up with a more stable product. Um, I, I, I just, uh, I, I mean, I've from the time of freeze own. until we deploy or until we say it's ready, I agree. But then we get six month release cycles. That was the. Which, hmm. which have been really stable. <laughs> I, I, I continue to not see the problem. Um, well, I guess um, I'm trying to, I guess, well, not, I shouldn't say I, what we were trying to sort of untangle, I guess, in this, the conversation at, at, um, at GCC was more of, you know, people can obviously run whatever Galaxy version they want. What, how, how do we get, should main wait on the formal release or not? I guess is the first question. No, nah, I mean, we've never done that yeah. anyway. So we don't do that. What should the granularity of deployments to main be? Should we do the massive change sets or should we have a more incremental rolling release approach? That seemed to be what we were leaning towards at the time. Um, Obviously, there are definitely concerns with that too, but um yeah, and, and I wasn't at that meeting. And you know, I, I'm I'm happy to like experiment, right? I'm just sort of my my experience and gut says it's a step backwards, but um yeah. I generally also agree with that. There's a huge risk in this. Um because there's also a cycle within this. So some people merge or want to merge um, difficult PRs in the beginning of the dev cycle and then spread it over that time and try to estimate when it ends and leave themselves. They freeze their projects earlier and so on. And uh, if, if we break through and deploy in between those actual development cycles, uh, there is a risk for sure. Yeah, but we don't want these developments at all, right? What we merge should work. Yeah, but some projects, hopefully we can like split all these projects in the future into these small chunks, but still some new projects start with bigger PRs. You can, or not bigger PRs, but changes which cannot yet work by themselves entirely, always. Which, maybe. But maybe- it shouldn't be merged. Those. Yeah. Keep it as a separate I mean, but branch. We do, I mean, realistically, like pragmatically, we, we do do what Sam suggests. And like, even people who are saying we shouldn't merge or we shouldn't do that, click merge on those things, right? Like, and myself included. I mean, I'm on I mean, in what way that they are there and users can run into the sharp knife? I mean, no, we don't do that. I we definitely, a little bit. I mean, if it's early in the release cycle and, and we know we have time to, you know, follow up and polish and fix, I'm definitely more likely to click merge on something if I, you know, if it's early in the release cycle rather than later. Or, I mean, if this, I mean, this happens with PRs that grow and grow and grow, you're like, okay, well, now we can't pull this thing apart. 
you know, hopefully we can get it in early in the cycle and then fix it. Right. That's also that's reality. I mean, I've clicked merge on things and been like, well, I need to take an afternoon in the future to go back and write some tests for this and to polish it off. Like, I mean, I feel like people who review PRs often will or, or have a list of things like, hey, can you follow this up after the merge that happens? And the it's self merging should be banned. Someone else should be merging the code. And if well, I mean, no, no, you, no, you can't. You that, can't technically you, banned. You right? can't self merge without an approval. If someone else approves right. it, they can. See. The only the we only have a, then like, then we have a way to stop it. These scenarios. No, but the only no, way someone but can self merge. PRs, other people's PRs that I merged and wanted to follow up on. Like it's not. Yeah. I'm not merging my own PRs early. Um. Okay, so this, we could probably talk about this for hours. Um, maybe, okay, so maybe for now, uh, the what we talked about at GCC, the sort of two-week rolling release cycle is way overly optimistic. That's the feeling I'm getting based on the conversation we're having. Um, maybe as a first pass at this, we could try... Um, well, actually, based on this release cycle, I don't think we can do it for 23.1. Um, so for 23.2, we could try to plan ahead and have some sort of uh, the technical leads meeting or whatever, look at the state of stuff and figure out a good point to try to pre-publish on main, if that makes sense. And to, instead of having a two-week cycle, just try to bisect the release at first-ish and see if that helps um, with what we've deployed to main. Obviously, we have to pick a point, and then if there are important fixes, we would continue to merge those into the use Galaxy branch. So, hmm. and I, I would add to uh, one uh, one more thing is that I personally think main should be as stable and error bug free okay. as possible because I think it can be really annoying for people to use it. Of course, I mean, we do our best. We got much better. Testing is much better and so on. Just, but to add that, that it's not a light thing to break main. It, it, it's not. And just to clarify again, this, the rolling release cycle was intended to reduce the bugs on main, right? So the whole point of pushing four months of stuff all at once is what we want to avoid. Um, yeah, I actually got sold on that. I think the more longer rolling release could be something very much good to explore. I mean, I think I this being a necessity for me came out of the new history work. Like, I mean, it was impossible to untangle it from making the production switch to Fast API. I mean, we had to look at live stack traces to see what's consuming uh, CPU time. I mean, we want to avoid this, right? The smaller the changes are, the more focused we know we can look at what's going wrong. And the faster you can fix the bugs that came in in the last two weeks, instead of you know having four months of bugs to fix all at once. Yeah, and you'll have already <laughs> forgotten what you did. Yeah. You did. I mean, <laughs> ideally you have tests and everything's so well documented that that's not a problem, but you still need to get into the headspace. So that takes time. and. I'm, uh... And you have less compounding stuff, so it's easier to find the root cause. That's the hope. I mean, I don't know. You you can totally argue this from both ways. I don't recall. Uh, um, I don't remember it being as quite as bad as John says. Um, deployers definitely don't want, they don't want more releases, right? You deployers, if you talk to people that run small galaxies or whatever, they want like their one release a year, two releases a year, something like that. Every time they update something, you know, they have to deal with an issue of some sort. Um, but that's, that's not us running main, right? That's different. And I think we can reduce the issues that deployers see by doing something more like this. Um, but again, I mean, we can, this is, sounds like a conversation that should probably continue down the road. Um, and we shouldn't try to like deploy to main today or anything. 
for example. <laughs> Martin, if you want to do it. Why not? <laughs> uh, okay. Thanks everyone for all the conversation on that. This is a, a, clearly something we should think more on. And um, yeah. Um, so wrapping up in the last couple of minutes, I guess. Um, so we, we definitely want to have point releases. This is important um, for, for a whole bunch of reasons, but basically we'll publish 23.1. We'll have 23.1.0 as the first one. Then we'll have 23.1.1.1.2, whatever. Um, each With each one of these point releases, um, instead of saying, yeah, just pull the latest code from 23. Dot, or from the release 23.0 branch or .1 branch. Uh, that's a typo. We're not doing 23.0. Um, we will we'll be able to have you know a specific set of bugs that were fixed between dot one and dot two you know and so on so we can tell a deployer look to fix the bug you're talking about you need to update to twenty three dot one dot three or whatever um, so uh, there's there's not a whole lot to, that that has to be built out to do this um, it's basically ready to go um, but we're we're going to start doing these with twenty three dot one um, I think this oh cool uh, I didn't have that much more. Um, so open questions on the release scaffold. Currently, we have the Docker release. Um, it doesn't seem like we've done that in a couple of years now. Um, and I was just wondering, I wanted to ask uh, what the state of, I mean, should we just drop that from the release scaffold and and uh, the uh, Docker Galaxy stable stuff is not happening or? I mean, we've effectively already yeah. dropped it, right? Because okay. Totally just trying to make it formal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, the other thing kind of related um, is, uh, should we add the Anvil Kubernetes deployment cycle, the release cycle for that to the official checklist and add, you know, owners for that, that set of artifacts, right? I, I would think yes, but okay. Yeah. Um, I'm reading the chat. Cool. Um, oh, backing up. Uh, Lucille, yes. Uh, same branch, just a new tag in GitHub. Yeah. Um, Re regarding the version numbers, if you're actually trying to adhere to the semantic versioning, the standard, it does have to be 23.0, not 23.1. Yeah, we're, but we're not. Um, it's because there's not going to be, so between 23.1 and 20, yeah. I think we decided that we... <sighs> We don't want to. We intentionally didn't want it to stick to Semver because that's not how it's going to work. Um, so starting with dot one made made sense. If that's that's my recollection of the discussion, at least. Um, we I mean, intentionally the year doesn't you know, really like. I know none of it makes sense. I, <laughs> It's the galaxy versioning schema, GVS, uh, that we're going to use. Um, I, I think it makes sense, though, for us, right? Um, it's not Semver. It's not month-based, but it, it gives us a way to say there's an early, there's there's th n number of galaxy releases a year, probably three to start with, and then there are point releases between those. Yeah, okay. I mean, you could also just do year, month, and point, but uh, the month is not fixed until it's actually released. Yeah, then I mean, I, month again, we'll, the release or uh, confusing month with release name is bad. That's the one thing we've learned. We'll have a February like release you have something that's like year, but then arbitrary number afterwards, <laughs> you know, that gets reset every year. Year seems to be a much better time scale for us. I guess it's the <laughs> we can hit the right uh, year. Uh, if it's the last <laughs> release in a year, but yeah, okay. Let's so, just but, do version view UIDs. Really, real <laughs> innovative here. Just a big hash. <laughs> should we just uh, should we just vote one more time on this if it's twenty three dot o or twenty three dot one? Because now with this argument, I don't know if it's better in alignment. I might be for 23.0, but anyway. It was not an argument. It was a question. I mean, un until until we ship it. I mean, I, I open uh, argument. I mean, like the, yeah. that it's, it's more in so, alignment with standard uh, version. Yes, we can. I opened a PR this morning to update the existing release from 22.9, to 23.1. If that's not what you want to do, comment on the PR. We can, yeah. 
Is that fair? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So, okay. So this was a resounding yes. We should uh, integrate the Anvil Kubernetes uh, stuff to the official checklist um, and, and make them owners of that or them. I don't know who, even who that is. That's a good question for right now. Who, who should be the point person for that? What working group or? Uh, human Ennis? Okay. Um, all right. Well, I'll follow up with you on that then. Um, and so the, the last thing I had was the current timeline for 23.1 or .o, as it turns out, based on the PR feedback. Um, we wanted to freeze in early December um, to still comfortably, re comfortably release in January, um, knowing that there's going to be probably two, two weeks in the middle of that, that, you know, people are going to be gone. Um, does anyone have feelings uh, on that? So freezing, I think I said 1205. So December 5th would be the, the freeze for the first or the anticipated freeze. Does that seem realistic? Yeah. Okay. All right. That's that's everything I had. Thanks for all the discussion on this one. I was really hoping this would be more discussion and less just walking through stuff. And it was. All right. I'm going to stop the recording here. And uh, we got a few seconds left in the in the hour. Um.